Tonight's game brought to you in high definition TV by LG. Life's good. Chris Mack. His team comes into this game, winners of 10 of their last 11, 14 of 16, ties a rookie record at Xavier with 26 wins on the season. And on the other sideline, Frank Martin leads K-State into the Sweet 16 for the first time in more than 20 years. And we're underway from Salt Lake. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore with you. What should we pay attention to early in this one? Well, this is a rematch from December 8th. We're at Kansas State. Kansas State pummeled Xavier off the glass. 16 points off of 14 offensive rebounds. Held Xavier to 29% from the field. We'll see if Xavier's gotten any tougher. As Kansas State won that game 71 to 56. But when we talked to Xavier at practice yesterday, they told us we're a totally different team. In particular, they've got a big man in Jason Love that's playing much better basketball. Yeah, Jason Love. Had some problems with consistency, but he got rid of that problem. Finished fifth in the A-10 in rebounding, solid inside offensively. Clemente off the mark. He gets his own rebound. Short jump shot, no. Love can't hold on. Clemente, he fumbles it. And here come the Musketeers. Crawford from Detroit, rising fire. And pulling a pull it down. A Chicago hard-nosed guard. Fires deep. So both teams letting it fly early. Yeah, that's how you get rid of the jitters. Get your shots out, get your yaya's out, and then you focus on playing basketball. Love has it blocked. Another thing that's different, Gus, about Xavier is Jordan Crawford. Earlier in the year, I had a chance to see him in a, a um, Thanksgiving tournament in Orlando. You can see the skill. Oh! You're right. You can see the skill. And the elevation is Crawford slams it down but now he's more comfortable with his teammates they with him he's exercised better judgment and comes into this game averaging 27.5 points for the two tournament games they've played thus far 20 on the year kelly straight away and hits and curtis kelly transfer from yukon came to this program getting some tough love from frank martin settled down a little bit and he's become a mainstay in the middle for the Kansas State Wildcats. Here comes Crawford. His brother Joe played at Kentucky. Now playing in China. Holloway backs it up, guarded by Pullen. Pick and roll. Turns a corner to the bucket. The scoop, no. Tipped around. And look at the bigs go up and get it. You're going to like this game, Liddy, because you got a lot of big guys. And big guys that can battle, big guys that don't back down. And Curtis Kelly and Jason Love. You know, this one of those matches made in heaven. Kelly facing. Takes Love across the lane, off balance. Good defense by Love, holding his position, extending the arms on defense, forcing Kelly to shoot over. McLean with the rebound. He's another Xavier big that has really been coming on lately. Now Love out of Philadelphia shows it. Nicely done. Hey, Jason Love is one of those guys when he gets it going down low. Nice use of both hands underneath. Pulling off the dribble on the baseline. Holloway the other way, block. Here comes K-State, Sutton. And they're going up and down immediately starting this game as Clemente have it, has it knocked out of his hands. And don't forget, for those of you waiting to see Cornell and Kentucky, we'll get you to it as soon as it tips off. The tip, 10.06 Eastern time. When you look at this Kansas State team, this is a team that plays hard just about every possession. And a lot of people wondered, you know, coming into this tournament, yeah, they may be able to win their first night, but do they have enough energy to continue with the way they play on the second night? Well, first things first, they've got to be able to put forth that effort, and Xavier has to be able to meet that effort. Frank Martin, they say teams take on the personalities of their coaches. Well, they've started calling this Kansas State team. Oh, we got a little chippiness right here between Lions and Clemente and just call the tech. And Clemente checks his nose to make sure that uh, it's still there. 
So a double tech call, but getting back to Coach Martin, who was an assistant with Bob Huggins, and when Huggins left to go to West Virginia, he got the head job. Congratulations to Coach Huggins there, advancing to the Elite Eight with their win over Washington. But now they're calling this Kansas State team in Manhattan the Doberman Pinchers <laughs> because they play with the ferociousness, and when they smell fear, they attack, especially on the defensive end. Well, they're pretty good at attacking offensively. That's right. There's pulling the head dog. 6-4. Jump shot. In and out for Jackson. Clemente, he's got speed to burn. Rising fire off the dribble end. Yes! So does they attack offensively extraordinarily well to the point where they're number one in the nation in free throws attempted. And free throws made per game. 30 and a half percent. 30 and a half free throws per game. And Freeze steps on the play. 15.55 to play in the first half. Up-tempo college basketball, folks. Kansas State running and gun at 8-4. Well, I'll tell you what, on offense, this is a very potent offensive team. Led the A-10 in scoring, scoring margin, field goal percentage, and three-point field goal percentage. So they should feel very good about themselves and their ability to put points on the board. Also, defensively, the last two games have held teams under 40%. But it's the toughness against the team, as you mentioned, that attacks and attacks that they have to meet. Pull it down low to Kelly. Freeze guarding on the seven-footer. Kelly takes him off the dribble and uses his quickness. And he also used his left on that one. That was a big-time move by Curtis Kelly down low, using quick feet. And Kansas State on an 8-0 run. So here come the Musketeers, 28-7. Excuse me, 26-8 overall, 14-2 in Atlantic 10 play. Crawford to the basket. And comes up short. A little too much handling, too much padding by Crawford. Got to move it. Clemente cut off. Now Kelly driving again. He's feeling it. Short. Out of bounds. Well, now he was so adept with his right hand. Got to realize Curtis Kelly is left-handed. And he makes that move right here. This is a nice job going up strong on that side of the basket. You think the Huskies of UConn could use it? <laughs> Oh, that's unfair. That's unfair. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes a new environment becomes a new reality. I think the reason that he was recruited by UConn because they knew he could play. Sutton facing Pullen, running the baseline, looking for it, fires, and it. Now you talk about a hot guy coming in. Jacob Pullen, absolutely terrific. Leads this team in eight different categories, including scoring at 19 a clip. 11-0 run for K-State. Here's Love. And a whistle. And it looks like a foul coming up against Kansas State. Don't forget, we'll get you to Kentucky Cornell as soon as it tips off. You know, the thing about Kansas State, they've got two guards that can put the ball in the basket. We talk about Jacob pulling out hot. He was 34 against Brigham Young in the second round. Inside, McLean cut off nicely. Kansas State very well prepared. But they've always been a solid defensive team. To the basket, and a whistle, and offensive foul. Lions, the red shirt freshman from Schenectady, called for the foul. 13 to 4, Kansas State. Judge, and he banks one in. Wildcats not fooling around. But while he judged the freshman, become emerging as an important role player. Not too long ago, he wasn't in the rotation on a regular basis. He stepped up. Judge to McDonald's All America inside. McLean has it blocked. Goes off of his chest and out of bounds. 
So Xavier having a hard time finding a rhythm. We talk about Wally Judge emerging as an important player. Here he is rendering a decision under the basket with the block. Now Sutton goes out of the game. And coming in, Rodney Magruder. For the Wildcats. Clemente. He's an Iron Man. He can play the whole game if need be. And he throws it away. Nice steal by Love. Crawford crossover dribble. Had 21 points in the first matchup. A little too anxious right now. Jordan Crawford's got to let the game come to him, forcing it. Inside. Easy. Everything easy right now. This time it's Jamar Samuels off the bench. 15 0 run. Well, you don't want to get Kansas State in transition if you're the opposition. Denny Clemente leads this team so well. The no look took the defense eyes off of the cutter down the middle, and he finds them. And this is a very experienced team. You talk about playing together. We had guys that have significantly improved as a team together. You got guys 23, 23, 22, Clemente, and Pullen have been playing together for a long, long time, and they know each other so well. Love couldn't hold on to it on the miss. Here's Clemente again. And he wastes no time getting that ball into the front court to use the entire shot clock. Clemente from Puerto Rico wears number 21 in honor of the great Roberto Clemente. Samuels inside, no, but there is Wally Judge. Again, we talked about the offensive rebounding in the first meeting between these two teams. And Kansas State with 16 points off of 14 offensive rebounds, picking up where they left off. 17-0 run for Kansas State. Love, jump hook, batted out. Jackson picks it up. Deep jump shot and hits. Well, Dante Jackson is one of those guys that you can't give any room. 40% from beyond the arc, outstanding three-point shooter. Comes at the right time for Xavier. 19-7, Kansas State with the lead. 11.35 to go here in the first half. Kansas seed at number two seed. It's their highest seeding since the NCAA tournament started to seed teams back in 1979. Their previous high at number four in 88. And this, as I mentioned before, a very mature team out there on the floor. You got Pullen, 21 years old, Clemente, 23 years old. You know, we've got Sutton, Kelly, 23 and 22, respectively. These guys know how to play the game. They've got the experience. Clemente in the corner, shot clock winding down. They go inside and it's knocked away and stolen by Crawford. Here comes Crawford. to the basket and a foul coming up. Holloway is bumped, but some hot shooting so far for Kansas State. And absolutely don't think for one moment that Butler's upset of Syracuse in the first game didn't register with these guys. They knew they had to get out to a hot start, fast, getting it from the perimeter as well as inside. They want to make sure they don't dig a hole that they have trouble climbing out of. Deep jumper, Crawford, too strong, and the rebound to Samuels. So for Kansas State in the first round, they beat North Texas 82-62, then BYU 84-72. Well, sticky fingers by Curtis Kelly. Missed that shot, but a tremendous catch. And now he's grabbing his back a little bit. Might have strained something. Got a little bit of pain registering on his face. All the way to the basket, no call. Picked up, McLean blocked and fouled by Samuel. So... What's the Elmore's edge on Kansas State? Well, you take a look right here. The guards have to be accurate. You're looking at Pullen and Clemente, who score a bunch of the points. Inside out balance, that means in order to remain accurate, you got to get into Curtis Kelly and company. And 10 players is what Frank Martin has in his rotation. They just wear opponents down. If they can continue to accomplish that, they go in places. First free throw good. Clean 6'8 junior from Hampton, Virginia as the sub comes in. And McLean has really been doing a nice job scoring. He's averaging 10 points and 9 rebounds over his last 11. Second leading rebounder on this Xavier squad. Seven and a half a clip. Yeah. 
Then he gets a pair. Now sub coming in, Andrew Taylor, junior forward from Toledo, 6'8". McLean heads to the bench. We talked about the backcourt for Kansas State, pulling in Clemente, pulling at 19, Clemente at 16 per game. And a foul away from the ball. Looks like Crawford picks up the foul. Yeah, you talk about scoring averages. This is a team that averages 80 points a game. And your guards close to scoring half of those points. Crawford picks up his first. I'll pull it, driving. Deep in the corner. Off the mark for Dominique Sutton and the rebound to Love. Xavier starting to find themselves now. Nice play and a foul. And that will send Andrew Taylor to the line. Great extra pass, though, to get him open. Now, earlier tonight, Butler knocks off the second number one seed in this tournament. First, it was Kansas, now Syracuse. Well, again, I mentioned it earlier with Kansas State and their hot shooting. Syracuse dug themselves a hole. Too many turnovers, too many opportunities for Butler to put the ball in the basket and build a big lead. And Syracuse never could quite climb out of it. They took the lead, but then Butler, obviously feeling confident, is able to take it back and end the season for the Orange. Second free throw good for Andrew Taylor. Nine point lead now. Kansas State has led by as many as 15. Pull it. Kelly fumbled it, picked up. Here come the Musketeers. Crawford, left hand so flip. Woohoo! With English. <laughs> the skills are there, no question about it. And the athleticism. Xavier now starting to feel themselves a little bit. A little confident in what they're doing, starting to create a few turnovers. Getting out in the open floor where their athletes can work. Clemente. Gets his own rebound from 16, and he drains it. The that stops an 8-0 run for Xavier. The very thing that buried Xavier in the first time these two teams met earlier this season, offensive rebounding. Kansas State out rebounding Xavier so far, 13-8. A deep jump shot goes down, and now we see Holloway extending the defense, 21-15. Clemente in the front court strip. Oh! Holloway trying to rob him at midcourt. Getting the open floor. That's where you get your athletes. And Jordan Crawford might be the best athlete on the floor. Look at the spin. Pull it. He is their leader. Kelly pulling up top. Oh. That's a young man that will not be denied, Jacob pulling. You give him enough room, he'll bury those. Holloway again to the bucket. The runner high and in. 24 17. Kansas State. Inside Sutton, great interior passing. A good look by Wally Judge. The freshman turning and facing, not rushing it, waiting for his teammates. Judge playing on that great D.C. Assault AAU team in Washington, D.C., in that Maryland area. Michael Beasley on the squad. Crawford down the lane, the teardrop, count it. 26 19. They are balling this evening, pulling off the dribble. Loose ball, Kelly. <laughs> Officials let the play, too, folks. It's physical out there. You better bring your hard hat, lunch pail. As these two teams 
here in the first half are playing with a whole lot of intensity. Kansas State averaging a little over 15 offensive rebounds a game, and when you're a jump shooter, you have all the confidence in the world. If you miss it, you know your guys are going to go get it. Holloway backs it up. Here comes Freeze, the screen. Holloway pushed off offensive foul. It's a good call. 28-19, K-State. Kansas State, the number two seed, taking on sixth-seeded Xavier. And right now, here in the first half, we have six minutes and 37 seconds remaining. Chris Mack played his college basketball at Evansville and at Xavier, was the captain of the 93 team, got lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Now Clemente starts the offense. Kelly pulling Sutton and Judge. Clemente, a quick release off the dribble, and the rebound goes to Xavier. In the front court, they find Crawford. Twenty-eight, nineteen. Kansas State has led by as many as 15, but Xavier finding their rhythm. Deep jump shot, Holloway, and there is it. And it's really been Terrell Holloway attempting to bring his team back. Off the dribble, shooting threes. Kansas State early looked like they were in total control. Inside, that one goes off the rim. It's saved from going out of bounds by Kelly, pulling another jumper, and that one sails out of bounds. So let's take a quick look at the game summary, Kansas State with a 28-22 lead. Well, obviously the shooting for Xavier's gotten a lot better. Three-point field goals will kind of help them get back into this ball game. We talked about Terrell Holloway trying to get his team back within striking distance. Jacob Pullen, but for that air ball right there, pretty much fine in the rain. Holloway and a whistle offensive foul call. Looks like a moving screen. And who will it go against? And they call it on Love. And Love picks up his first. Big fella staying out of foul trouble here in the first half with only one, with 5.20 to play. In the first half, 28-22, Clemente. And now we're going to go the other way. <laughs> Another foul. Well, I'll tell you what, what's interesting is that Kansas State still has this six-point lead. This is a team that leads the nation in free throws attempted a little over 30 per game, and they haven't attempted a free throw yet in this ball game. Not a lot of fouls being called. And the last foul called on Sutton as he picked up his first. Inside, Holloway again. Rims off. Judge with a rebound, quick outlet pass. Clemente in the open court. Nice look inside. But Kelly can't lay it down. Good catch, didn't know where he was under the basket. Crawford, Euro step to the basket and he lays it in. 28-24. You don't want that young fellow bearing down on you in the open floor. Kelly. You never know what he can do for you. Out of bounds and we're heading the other way. Not only do you not know what he can do for you if you're Xavier, you don't know what he's going to do to you if you're the defense. Whether it be the left hand or the right hand, Lenny, this kid can finish. Get him in the open floor, as I said, maybe unpredictable, but of late, good things happen. So after being down by 15 early, Xavier, they shake off the jitterbugs. And now, the Musketeers on a 20 to 9 run. As their coach said, Chris Mack, during his pregame speech, don't let anybody define our expectations. But one of the reasons is Xavier has kind of wrested the tempo away from Kansas State. And you saw them try to go to full court pressure or half court pressure right there, pulling, blocking the path of Holloway. And that's the seventh team foul against Kansas State. So Holloway shoots one and one. And he missed it. Four-point game. 
Clemente, thumbs up. That's the play. Holloway really pressing, pulling now. Right in his hip pocket. Pulling, crossed him over. Double clutch, no call. Out of, no, it's safe going out of bounds. That's a foul. So Pullen takes a bad shot, and Xavier will shoot free throws. Well, you're right, hounding him. And there, he just takes him into trouble right there. McLean with the block, Holloway with the recovery, Pullen with the foul. And the thing I didn't like after the last foul by Pullen, where he blocked the pass along the half court line, they're starting to complain to the officials. And you can't do that right now because you lose your focus. Second foul on Pullen, so Holloway at the line. Great free throw shooter. As he gets the first tonight, Dave's got Jessica Beal, Oscar winner. Christopher Waltz, Volts, excuse me, and a top 10 with Survivor, Heroes and Villains. 28-26, K-State. You know, Xavier's going to zone right now. And again, they've rested the tempo away from K-State. Baseline jump shot. Air ball. Roberts. But K-State holds on. The shot clock doesn't reset. It's at 10. Clemente. He'll fire a three. And Long snatches down the rebound. Here come the Musketeers. McLean back in the game. McLean backing his man down. Blocked and fouled. 3.23 to go. Xavier going to the line. Thank you, Greg. Kentucky with speed to burn. They'll take on the winner of that game, rather, with Kentucky and Cornell will take on West Virginia, who defeated Washington earlier this evening. McLean at the line, and he hits the second. And after trailing by 15, Len, Xavier right back in it, down by a penny. Well, they've been able to take advantage of some turnovers by Kansas State, as well as the foul trouble. Jacob pulling the leads. The Kansas State scores with 10 points. He's got two fouls. Jamar Samuels, who's been hot from beyond the arc, and a good defender, he's got two fouls. Rejection. Here comes Xavier. Oh, Crawford not ready for the pass. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, and Seth Davis will take you out for a live look at Cornell and Kentucky, and they will get you caught up on all the latest tournament news, plus an AT&T Naismith Watch update. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. And again, you talk about guys who can put points on the board. We talk about pulling. Obviously, Jamar Samuels is one of those guys that's six man of the year in the Big 12. He's kind of tiptoeing with the two fouls out there on the floor. It's really up to Denny Clemente, Wally Judge, and the rest of the guys on the floor to pick up the scoring slack with Pullen on the bench. Judge, 12-footer. That's that is way off the mark. Loose inside Samuels, though. Picking up the garbage and putting it in. Wasn't tiptoeing that time. Jamar Samuels, one of his biggest games of the year. 20 points, 12 rebounds off the bench against Texas. Very important player for this Kansas State team. Three-point game. Crawford driving to the bucket. Out of bounds. Well, for Xavier, it's Terrell Holloway who's brought them back. And he's using it with his explosiveness off the bounce. And ability to knock down the three. And he can be the kind of guy that single-handedly, by distributing the ball as well as creating for himself, that can win games for Xavier and certainly get him back into this one, which he has. That one almost stolen away. Holloway, oh, Crawford in the backcourt. And Crawford with some words for Jackson. He said, come on, man. Essentially saying, don't put me in that position. That pass a little bit out in front. And that allowed the defender, Dominique Sutton, to get a hand on it. Obviously, Crawford trying to recover goes into the backcourt with it. You can't have 
a lot of room for error, a lot of margin for error in your passes with this very aggressive Kansas State defense. Irving crosses over to the bucket. And he comes up short. Here come the Musketeers, 140 to go. Holloway. Baseline. Beautiful job. And that's Jackson getting to the hole. One point game again. A little bit of transition ball by themselves. Nice job just kicking it to Dante Jackson. Everybody plays Jackson for the three, and all he does is a nice little ball fake and drives the baseline to the basket. A nice addition to Dante Jackson's game. A guy who shoots 40% from beyond the arc, fifth highest percentage in the A-10, but people play him for it. So after turning it over, he makes up for it with an aggressive play to the basket. Meanwhile, at the free throw line is Jamar Samuels, who hits the first next Thursday on CBS. CSI is back and all new. Brace yourself for eight killer episodes in a row. It all starts next Thursday. Only CBS. 31 to 29. And Samuels missing the second. 118 to play. Here in the first half, inside the line, McLean, great catch. He waits and is foul. Right now, Xavier getting into the heart of the Kansas State defense. The last time off the bounce, it was Dante Jackson. This time off the pass, it's Jamel McLean. You got to get better ball pressure to prevent that kind of pass. McLean, a transfer from Tulsa. This is the first free throw. There come a couple of subs into the game. This time it's Wally Judge. Samuel's over to the sideline. He'll take a seat. And again, Frank Martin looking for somebody who can shore up the middle and keep Xavier out. So a lane violation on the first free throw against K-State. McLean knocks down the free throw, now with a chance to tie it up. And we're tied. Xavier climbing the mountain. The winner of this game will take on the Cinderella Butler Bulldogs, who knocked off top-seeded Syracuse. Although I, I hate to disagree with you. I'm going to five-seed the Cinderella. This is 23 games in a row this Butler team has won. You I may be right. I think we were going to start respecting them. I think you're right. Xavier with the Jets to take the lead. Holloway. Oh, he's fought hard. Third possession in a row. Xavier getting into the heart of the Kansas State defense. Judge tries to take the block. I'm sure he tries to take the charge, but call for the block. And Xavier will talk about them matching the toughness of Kansas State. Well, they've done more than that over the last several possessions. Holloway. Yes. Xavier with a chance to take the lead. They're on a 27 to 12 run. And they're in front. So how about this? After being down by 15 in the first half, what's Xavier done to be able to come back in this game as Coach Martin calls a timeout? We'll talk about it on the other end of the commercial. 32-31, Musketeers. 32-31, Xavier now in front. And Lenny, the question, what has Xavier done to get back into this game and take the lead after being down by 15? Well, first of all, it begins with getting Jacob Pullen on the bench. He's back on the floor right now. The leading scorer, they put a little cold water on him and got him on the bench in foul trouble. Secondly, outstanding defense against the rest of the K-State attack. And thirdly, Xavier themselves have attacked and put K-State on their heels. Three possessions in a row now. They've gotten in the paint and gotten scored. Holloway with 11 points, Crawford with eight, pulling, and that's a moving screen on Judge. And Holloway goes down. 
Looks like he may have taken a knee in the thigh. Take a look at Judge right there with the little lean to the right. Just enough for the official to see it. Watch him step and take that lean to the right. You got to give the defender a chance to change direction. So and out of the game goes Wally Judge with his third. And that time Judge came right on top of Holloway. Didn't give him that chance. Holloway hit the deck hard, but chance to give him a little bit of a breather. He seems to be all right. That's one guy Chris Mack does not want to come off the floor. Not at this particular time. So shot clock turned off. Game clock at 27. And the reason I say that because Holloway is the best creator for his team in this last possession. Keep your eye on Brad Redford. He's a sharpshooter. Number 12 blue in the right corner. 14. Holloway, he wants to take it himself, and that's a five-second call. Wow. Wow. Mental error by Terrell Holloway, closely guarded by Martavius Irving, and just didn't realize, and I'm not sure you could see the official who was actually making the count. That usually tips you off. 10.6 remaining in the first half. One-point game, 32 to 31. As they bring McLean back in, Redford takes it. C didn't get an opportunity to touch it. So Clemente. Pullins on the right wing. Sutton comes out the screen. Clemente turns to the bucket. The runner, no. And that's it. Xavier closes the first half on a 28 to 12 run. And lead by one at the break. We'll send you to Greg Govan of New York with AT&T at the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the Men's NCAA Basketball Championship exclusively on CBS Sports. Bad offense. Well, now you know why Kansas State plays so hard throughout the year. You don't want to listen to that at halftime. Bottom line is, Frank's right. Coming down, taking bad shots, that gives Xavier a chance to get into transition and allow Terrell Holloway as well as Jordan Crawford to bear down on you and score. All right, here is the in-game box score powered by CBS College Sports Network, Cable's home for the NCAA tournament. And it's all about the transition game. Bad shots on one end. That's the first pass on a fast break on the other. Holloway and Crawford taking full advantage. Also from a free throw standpoint, 13 free throw attempts, nine makes by Xavier. That's what's got them to lead. Clemente into the basket. He's playing with a strained neck, suffered at the end of the first half, and he lays that one in as Xavier turns it over. Talon picked up the foul prior to that basket. And again, we're talking about the free throw, Xavier, nine of 13 from the line. Kansas State only one of two. Remember, Kansas State leads the nation in free throw attempts per game at about 30. Crawford rises and hits. 34-33. And yeah, Jordan Crawford with 10 points. You heard Frank Martin say, fortunately, they played well enough in the first half to get it started the right way. That means they didn't have a situation where they got a huge hole to climb out of. Close game situation, almost start from scratch here in the second half. Clemente popping out, dumps it down, power dribble, Kelly hands it off, knocks, and one, Luis Colon. And that was the antithesis of the selfish basketball Frank Martin talked about. Here, totally unselfish. Kelly has a shot, but a better shot right here for Cologne. They got the message. Very good point, partner. As Cologne goes to the line. Oh! Will not add the free throw. Love comes up with the rebound. Jackson picked up the foul for Xavier, his second. And now the whistle. Elbow thrown. And it's on Cologne. That's his third. And you got to wonder, throwing an elbow and the ball is not even in, in the front court. Is Cologne trying to send a message or did he have brain lock? Let's see if that makes Love back down. Crawford, he won't back down. Left hand to the bucket. And the rebound goes to Curtis Kelly. Let's see what you get with 
Jordan Crawford on shots like that. A little feast or famine. A little bit out of control right there. Pulling wide open. Long rebound. Clay. Sutton. And a new shot clock. For Kansas State. Clemente off the dribble. To the basket. Beautiful. Clemente with eight points. 37-34, Kansas State. Down by one at the break. But they're playing with a great intensity level here to start the second half. It's been an up and down game for both of these teams. Frank Martin's Kansas State Wildcats led by 15 at one time. Xavier reeled them in to take a one-point lead at the break, but Kansas State, after a very emotional halftime breach by Martin, now up in front, 37 to 34. And one of the reasons that they've been able to get this lead is because they took Frank Martin's words to heart, started playing unselfish basketball instead of quick shots, bad shots, which led to transition for Xavier. And when Holloway and Crawford for Xavier get you in transition, you're in trouble. And Sutton call for the reach and foul. Frank Martin leading K-State into the Sweet 16 for the first time in more than 20 years. He's advanced to the NCAA tournament for the second time in his three-year career. And the win, winner of this game, rather, will take on Butler, who beat Syracuse, the top seed in the West. Inside love, great catch. And it's chipped out of his hands. No call. Hello. Nice recovery. Well, again, Xavier brings four up and then the lob and a nice block from behind. You would think that Jason Love would go strong to the basket with both hands instead of trying to dunk it with one. Now Love across the lane, jump hook, got it. Nifty move by Jason Love off the bounce. Turn and face. Love with four points, pulling, pushing off. Inside, block. Pull it again. Hand hit. Great uh, defensive play, but still offensive rebounding by Kansas State. Second chance. And they make it count. Pulling the 13. And a reach it foul. Oh, pull it, and that'll be his third. But here you see a terrific block right here, only to allow Kansas State to get possession. And Pullen makes that second chance count, as we mentioned. But here with the third foul, Jacob Pullen has to go to the bench. And that's a lot of scoring that you're going to miss. Averaging 19 a game. Four-point lead for Kansas State, so Pullen goes out. At about the 622 mark, as you take a look at the foul trouble for K-State, a lot of people with three. Holloway, he was terrific in the first half with 11. Love, posting across the lane, shows it. Brett, check it out of bounds. Curtis Kelly says, get it out of here. But when you're Jason Love, you got to realize that the help side comes very quickly. You got to make a quick move because you know once you get that fake up and under, the defense is coming. If you're not going to make a quick move, then you better look to dish it to the open man. Kelly, fourth in the Big 12 in block shots this season. A clean handling. And finally hands it off. And another foul called on the baseline. This time it'll go against Love. Four point game. Well, if you're Kansas State, Thank goodness for offensive rebounds. 10 offensive rebounds, 16 second chance points for Kansas State. Otherwise, they're minus 10 with regard to free throw attempts and minus eight as far as free throw makes. So Xavier getting their way on the free throw line. Kansas State just one of three, Xavier nine of 13. Kansas State with six more makes from the field.
Chris Merriweather in the game now for Kansas State. Clemente to the basket, the runner off the glass and in. Clemente using that feline quickness to get into the paint. And now the Wildcats take a 42 to 36 lead. And Clemente asserting himself couldn't come at a more perfect time with Jacob Cullen on the bench with three fouls. Crawford picks up his dribble. McLean backs his way in across the lane. A brick. Love with a rebound. Out of bounds. No call. And you're right about it being physical underneath right there. Ball goes up. You know, you got to be a man to go after it. Crawford inbounding. On the baseline. Baseline Lion. And right at it home. Mark Lyons with his first field goal of the evening. And we now have a 42 to 38 game. And Lyons saddled with foul trouble. Only played three minutes in the first half. Picked up three fouls. Irving trying to feed the post. The kick. Clemente! Batted around, picked up. Here comes Lyons. In and out, down the lane. Irving with the rebound. Clemente the other way. Down the lane, the finger roll is good. Man, this kid is fun to watch. He certainly is, and again, picks up the slack left by his running partner, Jacob Pullen. Pullen with 10 points in the first half on the bench with fouls. It's time for Clemente to step up, and he's done it. Inside, and Crawford gets the roll. Four-point game, Clemente with 12 points now. He had four at the break. Crawford with 12. He averages 20. Kelly in the hole. Quick turn, reverse. Out of bounds, and we'll stay right here. And the tournament's up. Well, Butler in that outstanding upset against Syracuse in the first game here. Making history, two number one seeds eliminated prior to the Elite Eight. More history in West Virginia, the only Big East team remaining. And that's because, not of conference, because they're good. It's all about teams right now. Here's Clemente, almost had it quick. Holloway, baseline color, Merriweather, and he can't get the roll. Love doing a nice job. Rebounding the basketball. Jackson. Yeah. One point game, folks. They are getting up and getting down in Salt Lake. 13 34 to play, second half. K State by a point. And Sunday on the amazing race, teams plunge into an exotic getaway, but there could be trouble in paradise. New episode of the amazing race, Sunday only. CBS. 44-43, Kansas State with the lead. But it's been an up and down game. We've had three ties and five lead changes. Kansas State is led by as many as 15, Xavier by two. Kelly, driving, pull it back in with three fouls. Fires on the baseline, and the rebound going to Andrew Taylor. Here comes Lyons. I love posting. He's got six points and five rebounds. Jump up. And no good. And a foul. Jackson. Well, the second half has been Diddy Clemente picking up the slack. Pullen spending a lot of time on the bench with fouls. And Clemente obviously stepping up in transition in the half court, being aggressive, going to the basket. Jackson picks up his third. He heads out of the game. Love out of the game as well. Redford is in. Along with Crawford back in. Clemente guarded by Redford. Now he can take him off the dribble at will. Kelly. The kick. Clemente wants a screen. And they make him go east-west. Good job by Xavier. And a foul inside. Sutton pushed in the back. Yeah, if you want to contain Denny Clemente, you have to make sure he can't turn the corner on you. And 
Crawford picks up the second foul. Inside they go again. And one. Talk about unselfish basketball as opposed to the selfish basketball Frank Martin talked about at the halftime. Here, the look inside. Pullen with a nice job just recognizing the high percentage shot inside. Dominique Sutton finishes. And again, we talk about Kansas State getting the message at halftime. Delivered forcefully by their coach. They throw away the offensive rebound. Xavier Redford with a nice recovery. Redford's a shooter. But he hadn't been able to get any good looks this evening. Look at the step out there by Curtis Kelly. Right now, he's got a guard, Mark Lyons. Nice job there, containing Lyons until the help comes. Seven to shoot, Crawford. He's got to hurry. Four to shoot, Crawford, and five. Man, is it getting physical out there now, Lynn. And I tell you what, K-State has a recognized time and score. Look at the shot clock. You don't bail Jordan Crawford out on that shot. Under 12 to go. Three-point lead. Xavier at the line. Forty-six, forty-three. Kansas State at two versus Xavier. A six. Under 12 to go. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore with you from the West Regional Semifinal. The winner of this game advances to take off Butler, who defeated top-seeded Syracuse in our first game of the evening. Three-point game. Kansas State with the lead. Crawford at the line. Fourteenth free throw attempt by Xavier. Nine makes. Crawford not able to take advantage thus far of that bailout by the Kansas State defense as the shot clock ran down. Crawford with 13 points tonight. On six of 14 shooting. He has not hit a three-point shot in four tries. Xavier back in the zone right now, trying to change defenses, grab control. Clemente three. And hits. Clemente really warming up in the second half. He has 15. Crawford. Redford. And the long rebound. Save from going out of bounds. Great job by Andrew Taylor. Redford again. This time it's pure. Redford averaged 36 a game in high school in Frankenmuth, Michigan. He's missed parts of six games because of a hip injury, but he is the designated shooter. And now Xavier getting into a zone. Baseline, Samuel, oh, and one on the power jam. Well, that's an answer. Redford knocking down the three. Kansas State comes right back, goes to their front line, the power game. And that's what you have to do. You got to be able to answer. Xavier tries to climb back into it. But you're talking about Brad Redford, second in the A-10 and three-point field goal percentage shooting. And 90, actually now 100 of his 107 career field goals are from beyond the arc. Samuels adds a free throw. Samuels with eight points. McLean picked up the foul, his third, 52-47. The K-State fans rising to their feet now. Holloway, and a whistle and foul. So let's take a look at the Infinity Coach's spotlight. Frank Martin, he won 21 games his first year, 22 his second year, 28 this season. Well-deserved Big 12 Coach of the Year, Frank Martin. Prior to his opportunity at Kansas State, known as a top flight recruiter. And yesterday he said, you know, after getting congratulations from me, he told me that you're only as good as your staff. And he gave a lot of credit to the guys on his bench, particularly associate head coach Delonte Hill. Uh, he's a guy that will share the success, Frank Martin, and that's probably why he will continue to be successful. But here's something even more interesting. 
Kansas State with 17 fouls already. So Xavier shooting one and one at the 10.44 mark of the second half. Xavier with 16 fouls. And a cool line in this game for Kansas State, as we mentioned it before. You know, they lead the nation in free throw attempts. They've only had four in this game. The winner here takes on Butler. Samuels, three. High bounce, batted out. Irving with the rebound. Kansas State continuing to do a good job on the offensive glass. Well, they certainly have to because they can't buy their way to the free throw line. Get those easy points that way if Xavier's the one get to the line with frequency. Oh, not a good pass by Crawford. But you give Irving some credit for the hustle right there. Ten minutes to go. Clemente, he's been a star. Irving, Samuel, and he shoveled his feet in trouble. Nine turnovers for K-State, nine turnovers for Xavier. Good thought, good look, bad execution. Coach knows it. Great night it's been here in Salt Lake City, 52-49. K-State with the lead. And Xavier chucks it out of bounds. The winner of this game will take on the Butler Bulldogs, who defeated a number one seed this evening in the Syracuse Orangemen. I'll tell you what, on the last play, Dante Jackson throws it to the official and ultimately out of bounds. But Chris Mack off the bench applauds Jackson for trying to make the extra pass. He knows his team needs to do that. Bowling back in the game. Merriweather. Now pulling, mishandles, picks it up, and has it swiped. Saved by Crawford in the foul. That's a hustle play, but it's the seventh team foul against Xavier. And Kansas State will shoot free throws. And as quickly as Chris Mack applauded Dante Jackson for that errant pass because he had the good intentions, here not very happy about this particular foul, although it was a foul based on effort going after the loose ball, but it's frustrating. So Chris Merriweather will shoot one and one. He's a 73% free throw shooter, 14 of 19 on the season. Merriweather has played in 31 games, started two. He averages less than a point a game. Tuesday on CBS, the world's number one assassin is out to get the head of NCIS. Don't miss TV's number one drama, NCIS, Tuesday, only CBS. And don't smack me on the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you felt that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew it was coming. Both free throws good for Maryland. Five point game. Now K State in the zone. Looks like a 1 2 2. Holloway. That one deflected by Pullen. Merriweather. Nice day. Kelly there for the stick back. Excellent hustle by Kansas State to get those white shirts down there to get the offensive rebound. Time on Xavier. Here come the Doberman. K-State led by 15 in the first half and ended up trailing by one at the break. And they have Xavier confused now. Switching defenses. Inside, McLean. Outside, Lions, and he turns it over again, back-to-back -back turnover. And Irving gets a timeout, and they're going to get him out of the game. Here comes Pulling. And right during that tie-up and during the timeout, Frank Martin went crazy on Martavius Irving for burning that timeout because right in front of Irving at half court where it was tied up, possession now is pointing in favor of Kansas State. So the timeout that he called was called unnecessarily. 
Might have burned one that they might use down the stretch. There's a strip in the front court. Here's Lyons to the basket. And out of control. Lyons can't lay it in. He wanted a foul. Clemente, again, high off the glass. Love picks up his sixth rebound. Crawford has not touched the ball. Inside, Love jams it down. Great look by Holloway. Holloway much more under control right now, dribbling with his head up. And you see the K-State defense. A little miscommunication there as to what they were trying to do. Eight points for Love. If you're Xavier, you'd like to see Terrell Holloway handling it more, penetrating more. Pullen. He's lost his touch. Pullen has been in foul trouble. Now Holloway, and he's bumped and fouled and will go to the line. 56-51. Back after this. We take a look at the summary by half and difference here. Xavier not turning the ball over as frequently obviously you're taking a look at the field goal percentage kansas state shooting better but most importantly kansas state listening to frank martin talking about selfish basketball six assists on ten field goals in this particular half but it's xavier staying in this game from the free throw line 18th field goal free throw attempt and they're plus eight as far as free throws made holloway missing the front end of a one and one Pullen feeds the post. Kelly, quick turn. Crawford with the rebound. Crawford has not been getting the touches, and he throws it away again. That's the second time on the break that we've seen Crawford try to feed a big, but they say it's last touch by Kansas State. Now, I'm not sure about that one. I think the officials have to huddle right now. They will, will probably reverse this call. I guess they don't. And Merriweather may have touched it. I'll tell you what, though, it wasn't the issue of the pass. It was who, to whom he was throwing it. Taylor not really ready for that one. Redford deep. And hits. Redford with two threes. And Xavier cuts it to two. That's a big call right there. Controversial gives Xavier another chance at the basket. And Redford makes it count. Brad Redford makes it a 56-54 game. Clemente stops and pops. Oh, that was a tough shot. 17 for Denny. Four-point game as we hit the six-minute mark. The winner to advance to the Elite Eight to take on Butler for a trip to Indy and the Final Four. Crawford. And when you're confused by the 2-3, who are you going to call? Jordan Crawford's zone buster. 58-57. You can't even get close to a guy and guard him from there. Across the lane, ah, Kelly ah, jump up, no. And a whistle and foul, let's see. And that's going to go against Kansas State. Wally Judge. And that's his fifth. Huge turn of events for Kansas State. Negatively, when you take a look, Wally Judge gone. The foul's just mounting up for Kansas State. And the fact that Xavier was aggressive in coming back from that 15-point deficit in the first half and continued it here has created foul problems for Kansas State. We talk about the differential on the free throw line. It's usually Kansas State that gets to the line far more often than their opponents. This time, the tables have been turned. So Wally Judge leaves the game. He finishes with four points, all four coming in the first half. And now at the line, Andrew Taylor. As you take a look at his free throw percentage, one and one, and he gets the first. And we're tied at 58. Don't forget, folks, the winner here will take on Butler, who 
knocked off top seed at Syracuse. Butler one game away from going back to Indianapolis, their home, to play in the Final Four. Second free throw, Taylor good. And Xavier takes the lead. 59-58. We've got a white knuckler here in Utah. Merriweather, Clemente, pops out on the wing. Pullen, 5 of 12. He's tentative now. Pullen, 10 to shoot. Clemente, here comes Cologne. Oh, oh he splits it. The floater, got oh. it. Oh, man. That's a point guard. 60-59. That's a basketball player right there, folks. And remember, at the end of the first half, he took that last shot, banged his head or his neck against one of the cameramen on the side. Must have knocked some game into him. Crawford. Ah! Yeah, with the rebound. Big ball. And Xavier takes a one-point lead. 61-60. After a slow start in the first half, Benny Clemente has come alive. Pull it. Stop and start. Clemente again. Oh, he it. And one. Possibly a four-point play. Clemente. Pullen gives it up. And Clemente knocks it down. Good byplay between the two of them, the two leaders of this team. Remember yesterday, Jacob Pullen talked about the fact that they got their teammates to play hard because after they lost to Kansas, they went to practice and they went at each other. And the teammates followed suit. And right now, playing with each other, Dennis Clemente picking it up. He adds a free throw. K-State takes a three-point lead. And you have to love Pullen and his effort because he knows that he doesn't have it going right now. So he's deferring to his teammates. And remember what Frank Martin said in his halftime speech? Unselfish play. You can't play that way. And it's time of the year. 4-12 to go. Clemente with 23. He had four at the break. Holloway looking over to his coach, Chris Mack, for a play. And they're going to call a timeout. We'll reset. 4-0-2 to go, folks. Three-point ball game in Salt Lake. Game reset, both teams with two timeouts, both teams shooting one and one. And the arrow favoring Kansas State, Xavier with the rock right now. And Kansas State one foul away from putting Xavier in the double bonus. And with two timeouts remaining, by all rights, Kansas State should have three if Martavius Irving recognized that the possession arrow was pointing his way before he called timeout to avoid a tie-up. Holloway, Jackson, McLean, Love, Crawford for Xavier. Holloway, high pick and roll, slicing, and traveling. 3.52 remaining, back after this. Welcome back, 64-61, Kansas State. The game reset each team with a couple of timeouts remaining. Both teams shooting one and one. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore. And Xavier staying in this ball game, even though they have been outshot from the field by seven. Kansas State with seven more field goals made. But Xavier, seven of 14 from beyond the arc, 14 of 20 from the line, whereas Kansas State only five of eight from the free throw line. Clemente has been wonderful in this second half. The backdoor lob, nice catch, Kelly, and he's fouled. NCAA March Madness on demand is streaming the men's division one. NCAA championship online for free. Watch any game, any time at NCAA.com. And boy, we've seen it several times. How about the hands on Curtis Kelly, man? You just need to throw it up there. You know, I don't know what adhesive he's got on his fingers, but he goes up and he goes and gets it. Kelly, first trip to the free throw line. This is the first. Now, of course, he's probably got to take it off when he shoots the free throws. And Kansas State is a team, 5 of 9 from the free throw line. Xavier, 14 of 20. And again, it bears repeating, Kansas State leads the nation in free throw attempts at about 30 per game. And they've only had 10 free throw attempts in this ball game. 
So Kelly misses a pair. 64-61. But seven more field goals has got them this slim lead. Kansas State back in the zone. It's caused Xavier some problems. They've thrown it away numerous times. Jackson, 14 turnovers for Xavier. Crawford, eight to shoot as he backs it up. Here comes Love the screen. Crawford in the corner. Jackson lets it go. And hits! And ties it at 64. Great set by the Musketeers. Showing patience. And with under three minutes to go, we've got a tie game. And Xavier shooting eight of 15 from beyond the arc. Baseline, the kick, Kelly, 16, got it. 10 points for Curtis Kelly. And Kansas State back up by two. Looking for a little bit of pressure here in the half court. Holloway has to stay in control. A little surprise pressure. Crawford again. Oh, another big time J by the kid from Detroit. And Xavier up by one. He has 19. Approaching the two minute mark. The winner to advance to the Elite Eight. Pulling, driving. They've got to get it to Clemente. Inside, Kelly. And a blocking foul. Xavier hanging around and actually taking the lead right here on this three by Jordan Crawford. Nine for 16 from beyond the arc. Throughout the season, teams have shot on average 33% from beyond the arc against Kansas State. Xavier living by the three right now. Look at his feet. Almost falling out of bounds for Crawford. Yeah, and if he had stood flat-footed, his feet would have been on the sideline out of bounds. Sixty seven sixty six Xavier on top of Kansas State and what a game it's been we've had five ties Ten lead changes Kansas State is led by as many as 15 in the first half Xavier all the way back to take a one-point lead They've led by as much as two and right now Curtis Kelly is at the free-throw line Shooting one to tie it up and what do you think Terrell Holloway's telling Curtis Kelly? Big fella, don't get nervous. <laughs> Ice water. Not even scraping iron. But this has been a game where the numbers have been upside down, as we mentioned. Xavier tremendous from beyond the arc. Nine of 16, and also getting a lot of free throws, although Kansas State's starting to catch up. They're the team, number one in the country, and free throw attempts, usually they live off of those points from the line. So he misses the second. Our game tied at 67. Here we go, folks. A trip to the Elite Eight on the line. Butler awaits. Holloway. Crawford, whoa! Unforced errors. Oh, that's about anxiety right there. A little too anxious to do what he does best. Right there, never got a handle on it. Never saw the ball come into his hands. It's all about possession, man. Catch first, move second. Here's Clemente over the midcourt line. 19 points in the second half for Denny. He fires a high archer. Loose. Ball squirts out. Love dives. It's saved. Here comes Pullen. How about the hustle of Jamar Samuels keeping that thing alive? Also, Dominique Sutton grabbing it. Pullen with a lead off the heel. 67-67, a minute to go, Crawford! And they'll slow it up. 50 seconds to play. Not a bad play by Crawford. He's been hitting those. Now he's got a two-for-one situation where they'll get the ball back, provided they get the rebound on a miss or even on a Kansas State score. 46.5 to play in the second half. Kansas State, Xavier, tied at 67. Coming up, the stretch right after this.
46.5 seconds remaining in the second half. Second seeded Kansas State, sixth seeded Xavier, the rematch of a game that was played on December 8th in Manhattan, Kansas, when Kansas State won at 71 to 56. Different story right now. We're tied up with 46 and a half to go. Yeah, and really what it's come down to, Xavier has more than matched Kansas State on the boards. They've done a terrific job there, shooting the ball extremely well from beyond the arc, even though they're at a deficit as far as field goal made. But right here, you want Denny Clemente to handle the ball. He's your creator. Remember, if Kansas State gets fouled, they've got the double bonus. Pullen is 5 of 13, but he has the heart of a lion as they give it to their leader, who backs it up. Runs a pick and roll with Clemente. Pullen stops. Seven lets it go and buries it. Home. 20 seconds ago. 70 to 67. Xavier, Holloway. Xavier's not calling timeout. Holloway to the basket. Short. Live. Ah. Up and in. And we've got a one point game. 12.1 to go. 70 69. Uh, Elite eight appearance on the line. All right, Greg, as we reset it one more time for you with 12.1 to go. Each team with a timeout. Xavier with 10 team fouls. And thus, I like the move from Chris Mack. Didn't call a timeout because he knew Kansas State wouldn't foul. And they got the quick two. Now, Xavier can try for that steal, maybe foul, and even if the free throws are made. It's still a one possession ball game. And they give it to Pullen, and finally he's fouled. Holloway lets some time off the clock. 9.7 to go. It's Frank Martin. So passionate during the halftime speech, but honest to his kids. And again, even if Pullen makes both of these free throws, it's still a one possession ball game. 9.7 seconds left. Xavier's got time to at least tie this thing. And if he misses, chance to win first one good pulling one of one from the line Anya Martin you can tell a coach's wife man yes you can down the stretch they're feeling it just like the coaches are see those hands clenched deep breath for pulling big free throw here on a make or even a miss Xavier's gonna call a timeout set up that last one and he gets both 72 to 69 timeout Xavier 9.7 to go back to Salt Lake after this Nine point seven seconds remaining. Seventy two to sixty nine Kansas State. Xavier out of timeouts. What do you do here Lynn. You got to go the length of the floor. Do you go for a three or a quick two. I'm going you got to go for a three. Because of the way that uh, Kansas State is shooting free throws. You get a quick two and you foul. They make them both. You're still going to have to do that. And that's, that's the kid. And he's been hot. And he's been hot from deep. The decision has to be Kansas State knowing that. Xavier has to shoot the three. Do you, if they don't get a shot going, and if it's under three seconds, do you foul? Here comes Holloway with the screen. Oh, he's fouled! But, on the shot! But not in the act of shooting was what I was going to say. And he's going to shoot three! And see, this is why coaches don't want to foul when they have a three-point lead. They don't want to foul. He fouled them before that. Did you see that? He fouled him before and there was no call. And he's the last guy, if you're Kansas State, that you want at the line. I Holloway see. leads the A-10 in free throw shooting, 85.2. At one time, he had hit 19 in a row this year. I know exactly what Frank Martin was doing, and they tried to foul him before getting in shooting position. First one good. You take a look right here, ball comes down right there, right there, freeze it. There's the first foul, as we saw Clemente grab him. And now, they didn't call that one. The second foul should have never occurred. Second free throw. 
good. 72-71. And now you see why coaches are loath to foul in that situation where they think you put them on the line for two, you get the ball, and you're up one. You are absolutely right. That is a huge dilemma. And the biggest reason is because maybe the officials don't see it as they didn't see it here. The strategy pretty much is if they make it, Xavier makes it, then Frank Martin's got to call a timeout, or he's calling a play, make or miss, right here. But Take here, another look at the play. Yeah, here's the problem. They tried to foul right here. You see that? He grabs him. Official standing right there, doesn't call it. He sees him put both arms around him. Right there, no call. And now, that second foul should not have occurred. Merriweather should have laid off. Take another look right here. Look at Clemente, grab him. Both hands around him. You see that? That's a foul. No call. And then, then Merriweather with the foul. Huge no call right there. Both hands around him, as you see right there. That's what Frank Martin was trying to do. If they call that foul, only two shots. Kansas State gets a chance to get possession of the ball, get fouled, and maybe end this ball game. Holloway, five seconds to go for the tie. And he got it. We're tied at 72. Kelly Olimba, Sutton, Clemente. They want Clemente. They give it to Pullen. Pullen in the front court. Two to shoot. Oh! And we're heading for overtime. In Salt Lake. And Frank Martin is beside himself. He's letting the official on the play know that you missed that call. And he absolutely missed it. We're going to take a look at the last shot. Kansas State, very fortunate to get it in bounds to their best player, Jacob Pullen. Plenty of time. He pulls up. Lions right on top of him. Challenges it. The ball just a bit long, a bit offline. That is the shot that Kansas State wanted, particularly with five seconds left. Probably the best shot that they could have gotten. But free basketball. No doubt about it. So we head to overtime. Kansas State, one and one. Make that 0-2 in overtime games this year. Losing 81-79 to to Kansas and 85-82 to Iowa State. Xavier, 1-1 one one in overtime games. Inside backdoor problem. They ran that play earlier, and it worked earlier. And once again, Jordan Crawford circling. That's kind of an opening play for Xavier. They'll do it very early in the game, maybe even on the first possession at the beginning of the game. Xavier, one and one in overtime games this year, losing 96-92 to Wake. Kelly, jump hook good. And winning 78-76 in double overtime against Richmond. Holloway. Crawford facing on Sutton. Now he backs it up, takes a jumper. Taylor with a rebound and a new shot clock for the Musketeers. Boy, Jacob Pullen had an opportunity for that. Maybe a step slow. Could it be a little bit of fatigue? Holloway. And he fires. And out of bounds. Let's take a look at the foul trouble for both teams. Well, again, you had some guys that are out. Wally Judge and Jamal McLean. Dante Jackson. Dante Jackson with four. When you look at Dominique Sutton and Jamar Samuels, it's the best defenders for Kansas State with four fouls. Sutton and Samuels. Clemente turns the corner, steps back. He out. feeds the post. He thought about stepping back and firing. Kelly and a hand-checking foul coming up. Curtis Kelly on the line, only one of four thus far. He makes that one. And this is game has been about subtleties in the game. Down the stretch, Frank Martin makes a call. Has to be able to foul before Xavier can get off a three. First foul not called. The second one is called. Terrell Holloway knocks him down, and that's why we're in overtime right now. And the winner will take on Butler who defeated top-seeded Syracuse. Bounce pass, love. Goes the other way. No, rejected. What a block shot by Kirk Kelly. 
his third of the game. Well, Jason Love misses the first one, and then Kelly comes out. He probably wishes he could have kept it inbounds. Jackson, the inbounder. Crawford popping out. He'll pull up from there. You got to get up on him. Crawford looking for some creases down the lane. Batted around, out of bounds. And Kansas State will get it again. Sutton. Kelly inside and a five. And that was Samuels posting up. And he's fouled from behind. Nifty little play inside. Trying to play high-low. You get your point guard curling off to see if the big man would help. Taylor does help, and he realizes what's going to happen, so he pulled Jamar Samuels down, making sure Samuels didn't get an easy pass and a dunk. Samuels, two of three from the line as he gets the first. 77 to 74. And now a sub getting ready to come in for Xavier. And it's Brad Redford who hit two big threes in this game. And he goes to get Andrew Taylor. Xavier's putting some firepower out there from beyond the arc. Both with Redford and with Jackson. Both of them 40% or better from beyond the arc. Catch and shoot guys. That means you look for Holloway maybe to try to penetrate and then start kicking. Second free throw and he gets a shooter's roll. Four point game. Here comes Holloway with Crawford. So you got three outstanding three point shooters on the floor for Xavier. Redford in the corner took his eyes off of him. Cross court to Crawford. And two pretty good penetrators in Holloway and Crawford. Holloway three. Oh, bam. He rattled it home. 78 to 77. And I know Xavier expected Holloway to deliver it, but maybe not necessarily like that. Maybe off the bounce and kick it to the three-point shooters, but you take the opportunities as you find them. Samuels flashing, facing. Kelly calling for it. He gets it. Left hand jump hook. Beautiful. Sweet. The big boys have shown up tonight. 17 for Kelly. Three point game. How about the footwork inside for Kelly to get in position for the kiss? 80 77. Holloway again. Hesitation. He has 21. And Frank Martin wondering where's the defense? Critical juncture, guard shouldn't be able to walk down the heart of your D without somebody coming up to contest from the weak side, from the help side. Kelly. Inside, Samuel. And one. You talk about toughness, that's what's gonna win this basketball game. Take a look at Samuels inside, locates the defense, makes the move. Jordan Crawford tries to strip. Watch him reach out with the right hand. If you're going to do that, you got to make sure he doesn't get that ball up above his chest. Put him on the free throw line. You don't give him a chance for three. Samuels with 10 points, four rebounds. Oh! This is a free throw, and that's a foul on Sutton. It's a push in the back. And I believe Sutton has fouled out of this game. Yes, he has. We talked about the foul trouble. Two of their best defenders, Samuels and Sutton. Particularly Dominique Sutton. He's the defensive expert, usually assigned to the top perimeter player of the opposition. He's gone as well. And Jamar Samuels, a big 12, sixth man of the year. Another defensive specialist still out there for Kansas State. So at the end of regulation, the score here was 72-72. 118 to play in overtime at Kansas State.
holds on to an 82 to 79 lead. And Jordan Crawford goes to the line to shoot. 77% free throw shooter. And the ante is up when you're playing for a chance to go to the Elite Eight. And he's shooting two. Both teams in the double bonus. And he gets a pair. One point game. 118 to play. Overtime. The winner advances to the Elite Eight and will have a shot at the Final Four against the Butler Bulldogs. Clemente inside and a foul. I'll tell you what, Kansas State dodged one that time. Good body positioning, because this is not a good angle to feed that post right there. As you see, Taylor, had he went out after it with his left arm, turned his body around, he might have been able to deflect that and avoid the foul. Instead, he went with his right arm and created contact. Not a good angle for the delivery of that pass. But Kansas State gets the benefit. Samuels, four of six from the free throw line. Down the stretch, Kansas State hitting their free throw. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I am so impressed with both of these teams. I mean, throughout the season, we lament how free throw shooting, you know, is a lost art, not practice. It doesn't even seem that young men care about shooting it. But this is where it counts. And for every guy that's sitting at home that longs to be in this tournament at this stage, you better work on your free throws. Samuels gets both. Three-point game. A minute to play in OT, 84-81. Holloway, Redford back on the court. Offensive substitution. Holloway turns, flies. Oh, he buried it again. Now he tied at 84. Wow. I guess you can work on that too, huh? Yes. <laughs> Clemente pulling. Drives to the bucket, got it! K stayed up by a deuce. And the shot clock turned off. 86 84. Here comes Holloway. Crosses over for three. No! And the rebound of Merriweather, who's quickly fouled. Well, you had a feeling it was coming. Terrell Holloway feeling it, trying to end it. Took a three, maybe when they didn't necessarily have to. With his breakdown skills, could have gotten to the basket. But he did take it at a time in which Xavier will get another crack at the basketball. Well, they knew that they would have to foul regardless. They'll get another crack at it, but it'll be a two-possession game if Merriweather knocks down these two. Merriweather two for two tonight 74 percent free throw shooter different kind of ball game though for a guy who's averaged only eight minutes a game throughout the season One more for Merriweather. And he gets a bounce. 87 84, 18.1 to go. Holloway has shown a flare for the dramatic. Holloway, 11 to go. Holloway kicks it out. Crawford, eight. Crawford's got a hurry. Up. Oh. Oh, no! He tied it! Clemente! Clemente fires! And we're we'll the double overtime! What a game! Instant classic on the corner of John Stockton, Carl Malone Drive! Jordan Crawford takes matters into his own hands. He doesn't care where he is on the floor as long as he's behind the line. 
And the guy averaging 27 and a half points coming into this game in the tournament. 87, 87. We're going to double overtime. Let's check in with Greg Gumbel. What a game it's been, double overtime. We were tied at 72 at the end of regulation. Now after one overtime, we're tied at 87. The winner advancing to the Elite Eight to take on Butler for a trip to the Final Four. Samuels, Pulley, Merriweather, Clemente, Kelly for K-State. Here's Clemente down the lane. Rebounded by Love, Crawford. Crossover dribble, 15-footer, and the roll. This kid is turning out to be a Motor City madman. 89-87, Crawford with 28. This is going to turn out to be a game of attrition with the foul problems Kansas State has with the fatigue that both teams are feeling, and certainly the pressure will accelerate that fatigue here in the second overtime. But make no mistake about it. Jordan Crawford is hungry, he's feeling it, and he thrives in the spotlight. Kelly, he has been terrific. 19 points for Curtis Kelly, and he ties it at 89. Holloway in the corner, Crawford again. Love, good no no. And Samuels with the rebound. Now pull it quickly into the front court, down the lane. The runner, no! With the big time finish, Crawford. Inside, knocked away, it's stolen. Got himself in trouble in that short corner. Triple team, K-State didn't worry. Pull it. Oh, he fumbled it out of bounds. Kansas State didn't stand there and celebrate on the Kelly dunk right here. Instead, they got back quickly on defense, triple team. Crawford and force that turnover. And Kelly is injured. Oh man, what a huge, huge turn of events for Kansas State. Curtis Kelly, just a tower of strength inside. Looks like he's really severely injured that right hand. 21 points, eight rebounds for Kelly on nine of 17 shooting. 91-89, K-State. Holloway with Jackson, Love, Crawford, and Taylor. Well, as much as he complained about it, here he comes back to the scorer's table. Crawford to the basket. Pays it in. And makes it in. Crawford ranked 24th in the nation in scoring. And he has put on a show. He has 30. And he ties it at 91. And Kansas State hopes they get a break in the action to get Curtis Kelly back in the ball game. It wasn't his hand, he was just bent over with fatigue. Pull him. And a whistle, this foul is gonna go against Xavier's Andrew Taylor. Good call. Whereas Terrell Holloway kept Xavier in the game during regulation, it's been Jordan Crawford, who in the, both overtimes has really stepped up, not to take anything away from Holloway and his exploits, particularly in the first overtime. But Jordan Crawford is feeling it right now. And as I mentioned, when Curtis Kelly walked off the floor, he was holding that hand bent over as if he really injured it. But it just seems as though he's as tired as anyone out there. And you take a look, I talked about this being a battle of attrition. A whole lot of foul trouble out there. Just one away from somebody being disqualified among the key players. Luis Colon missing the first. 42% free throw shooter. And he missed the pair. Well, he's not the guy that Frank Martin would like out on the floor. Curtis Kelly can't get in the game because there's no stoppage of the clock to allow him to get in the game. Redford back in the game for Xavier. We're tied at 91 and double OT. Pulling, guarding Crawford and Chris Mack, the head coach in his first year, wants a timeout. He might have done Kansas State a favor, because now Curtis Kelly's back in the ballgame. We talked about it throughout this game. Kansas State, number one in the nation in free throw attempts, at a severe deficit as Xavier really got to the line a lot more. But in the second half, 
Kansas State starting to make up that deficit with aggressive play to the basket. And that's what they thrive on. They average about 20 points a game from the line. Weren't getting it early in the game. Both these teams now breathing hard in double overtime. We've had 12 ties and 15 lead changes. The winner to take on Butler, who knocked off top seed at Syracuse in our first game of the evening. And I must admit, when Curtis Kelly came off, he was bent over, kind of held that right hand close to his midsection as if he heard it, had the other hand on top of it. And now he's back in the ball game as if nothing happened. He might have been just fatigued. Crawford fade away, no. Fuller with the rebound. He's got Merriweather, Clemente, Kelly, and Samuel. Clemente has logged some heavy minutes tonight, folks. His legs look like they may be on E. Samuel, no call. He lost it. Arrow favors Xavier. Now see, here's where that kind of contact had an impact on the possession. It's a flop, it's contact. If it's not an offensive foul, then you gotta call a block because it had impact on the ball handler. Right there, it just made him bounce the ball and lose control of it because of the contact. And no call, even though that was a flop and you're not supposed to benefit a flopper, Xavier gets the benefit of that flop with possession. Very good point, Len. 91-91, here comes Holloway, guarded by Clemente. Holloway looks fresh, crosses over to the basket, stripped out of bounds. And it was by Curtis Kelly, good hands, and does it without fouling. That's why he was so important out there on the floor. And for that period of time that he missed, gave, Cam, uh, gave Xavier a chance oh, to Oh, quick strike on the inbound, what a play by Jackson to Crawford. They weren't ready. K-State not ready there. Xavier up by two. They're waiting for me to finish my comment, but, but they jumped me. That's right. Pull it. Merriweather. Clemente. Now pull it. Turns. Fires. Got it. You talk about conditioning. Pullen comes off the screen. The three-point area has enough to square up and knock it down. 94-93, Kansas State, double OT, 105 to go. On that last out of bounds, where's Jacob Pullen looking? Not paying attention. Crawford makes him pay, but he gets him back. And I say conditioning here in a double overtime for a guy to come off a screen, be able to catch, square up, and get that elevation. You shoot threes with your legs and to shoot it as pure as Jacob Pullen has, that's pretty good conditioning. But even more than that, Len, when we talk basketball, you always tell me it's confidence, and his confidence wasn't great. He was in early foul trouble, then he came back in the game in the second half, and one time he was 5 of 13, but he still has the nerve to take those big shots. That's right, you talk about confidence, he never lost it. You know, he considers himself a leader, as he told us the other day. And if you're a leader, you got to make shots like that. You got to take shots like that. Here's Crawford. He's the leader. Up, in and out. Love, rebound, and he's five. The big fella has been putting in major work tonight. Ten points and 14 rebounds. He's been contained for most of the overtime, but Curtis Kelly loses him. And Jason Love, no quitting him. That's because he comes from a family. His father raised three boys all by himself. Worked for the Philadelphia Sanitation Department. Love really working on his body as Coach Martin looks on. One more free throw coming. Love for the tie. And he's got it. 94-94, 50.8 to go. Who's in shape? Well, that's going to tell right down here again. Situation where Kansas State should have gone or could have gone two for one, but instead they're going to hold it, get the best possible shot. Xavier still will have a possession. 19 to shoot, pull it straight away. Bam! He's in shape. 
794, shot clock turned up. Holloway. Oh, he's fouled. And he'll shoot two. And even though Curtis Kelly holds his head, as you take a look at Jake McPullen, once again, squares up, elevates. You shoot the threes with your legs and just terrific footwork to get his feet set and get his shoulders square. And when you can do that at the end of two overtimes and you've played all the minutes that he has, you know you're in shape. Holloway, first free throw good. He hit the three key free throws at the end of regulation to tie the game up at 72 and send it in the overtime. And this play may work out. Even though Kelly didn't want a foul, Holloway makes both of these. Or if he misses and provided Kansas State gets the rebound, they become the hunted as Xavier will have to foul. 97-96 and a timeout called. Welcome back. Xavier out of timeouts. Kansas State with one. Both teams in the double bonus. 25.1 to go. And we've got a one-point game in double overtime. Well, the first thing coming out of that huddle, Frank Martin has reminded his guys, well, the last thing, possession arrow in your favor. On a tie-up, you don't have to call timeout. Be strong with it and get tied up. But inbounding this ball, if Xavier's going to try for one steal and then a foul, you got to get it to Pullen or Clemente, the two best free throw shooters out there on the floor. So they don't guard the inbounder, Kelly. And he finds Pullen, who's quickly fouled. And he will go to the line and shoot two. Pullen, two of two from the line this evening. Make or miss, one possession ball game. He's an 81% free throw shooter. Xavier with no times out. And after this first shot, obviously two shot bonus situation. With no times out, getting Jordan Crawford back in the ball game. He's had enough time on the bench to rest to get his legs. And he makes the first. And you keep Terrell Holloway on the floor. Make or miss, this is going to be a push by Xavier, 24.3 seconds. They'll have plenty of time to get into their offense. Xavier out of timeouts. Kansas State still has one. Redford comes back in the game. He's a three-point specialist, number 12 blue. Crawford has 32 tonight. Pullen. And he gets a second one. 99-96, no timeout, Xavier. Here we go. Holloway turns a corner. Holloway kicks. Pump fake, Jackson three. Short. Rebound, Kansas State, and a foul. Clemente has it. Not a bad shot. Went to the right guy, Dante Jackson. Fifth in the A-10 in three-point shooting. Around 40%. And maybe Chris Mack didn't want to go to the well too often. Trying to get it to Holloway. It's certainly K-State recognizing Jordan Crawford's danger. And they bottled him up. Clemente, a 75% free throw shooter. And he gets the first. Four-point game now. Two possession ball game. That was a huge free throw. And Xavier again with no times out. They've got to push the ball, get it one up as quickly as possible. Kansas State calls their final timeout. 196 back after this. 196. Kansas State 11.6 away from heading to the Elite Eight. The winner of this game goes on to take on Butler for a trip to Indianapolis and the Final Four. Clemente at the line.
And he hits it. No timeouts for Xavier. 101-96. Holloway picks it up. Nine seconds. Hands it off. Crawford a three. Off the front rim, no. Out of bounds with four seconds to go. And Xavier will have it once again. Frank Martin, he can't look. Did you see where Crawford shot that ball? That's a 35-footer. He actually made a couple of those today, but he's got no fear. Four seconds remaining. The Wildcat fans chant KSU. Redford a three. Off the glass, no good, and that's it. Kansas State heads to the Elite Eight with a double overtime win over Xavier. 101-96.